this video tutorial brought to you by cutvid.com. I want to talk today about a very, very simple feature in Photoshop, but one that's very easy to misuse, especially if you're pretty new to Photoshop. It's located here under image and adjustments. It's the brightness contrast adjustment. Now, before we jump into the tutorial and kind of how I think this adjustment should be used, we got to talk about our sponsor, which is graphicstock.com. April of 2016 is Graphicstock's Creative Rewards Month. You can sign up now. For if you're a new member, that is, and for $39, get six months of access. It's usually about 50 bucks per month to have access to Graphic Stocks Library. They've got over 300,000 photos, illustrations, vectors, you name it here. So if you're looking to get hype with grandma like I am, they've got just the photo for you. So, graphicstock.com, there's a link down in the description of this video. Check it out. Let's talk about brightness contrast adjustment. Number one. Most of these adjustments here have adjustment layers. So instead of using these adjustments up here, you should go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and choose it like this. So we've got Brightness Contrast. We're going to add a bright Brightness Contrast layer. You can give it whatever name you want. I'm going to leave it as just Brightness slash Contrast 1. You can see we've got our adjustment layer. The whole reason this is great is because we can shut it off anytime we want. We can adjust the opacity of the layer. And most of all, we can apply a blend mode to our adjustment once we've created it anytime we want. So if we come back in a week and realize, eh, it's not quite right, I need to tweak the adjustment, I can always do that. If I just apply it directly to the pixels on the image, it's done when it's done. And I can't go back and tweak or adjust it or take it away if the client wants it gone. So brightness contrast, let's check this out. It's pretty straightforward. Well, first of all, use legacy. That's an older version of brightness contrast. We're not going to mess around with that. With brightness here, let's increase the brightness a bit. Uh, well, quite a bit actually, maybe like f about 40 ticks, and I'm going to reduce the contrast a whole lot. So what this is going to do is it's going to overall increase the contrast of the image because we're pumping a lot of brightness into the photo, um, and just so we don't lose detail in our highlights like we would if we cranked up the contrast too, um, reducing contrast is going to save details. And by the way, one of the biggest things that I see a lot of novice photographers do, and one of the things that I used to do all the time was... When I look to increase contrast, I would do just that. I would increase the contrast of the photo by just grabbing any old contrast slider, and you got it, cranked it way up. A lot of times, there's much more effective ways to increase contrast, and as counterintuitive as it seems, one of the best ways to increase contrast is to reduce the contrast with some of the <laughs> methods used to create contrast. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we've got this adjustment layer here. We very obviously killed off a lot of contrast, but somehow our image does not appear super flat. I mean, it's it's lost a little bit, but not much. We've gained a lot by reducing the contrast and being able to uh, increase the brightness as much as we have. Um, let's create another brightness a contrast layer here and work with a blend mode to really pull all this together. We're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, brightness contrast, hit OK. We could just set this um, layer to the blend mode of like soft light and you can see it really pumps a lot of contrast into there. In fact, too much, which might make us want to reduce the contrast in our adjustment layer or even reduce the overall opacity of that adjustment layer as it's being applied to our image. So if I remove both brightness and contrast layers, you can see that we're able to really give this photo very much of like a high key effect and preserve a ton of that contrast Instead of just you know throwing one brightness contrast adjustment onto this image and saying, hey, um, go ahead and just blast a Ruski the contrast out of here, and you can see what that does. It just like increases all the colors. She's got like this you know yellow, red, heavy colored skin. It does a lot of damage. So instead of doing that, we've increased the contrast, we've increased the brightness, we've preserved the color by using brightness contrast layers with low contrast values to actually increase the contrast of the image. And we're doing that mainly by using a soft light blend mode. So this is the way that I like to use the brightness contrast adjustment layers. Oh, and I should mention, it would be terrible for me to forget this before I let you go. I'm going to shut these off. One of the main ways that I use brightness contrast when I'm retouching is when I do color grading or I use a gradient map to do some color grading for me. So I'm going to throw a gradient map on here. And a gradient map basically maps the dark color in your gradient to the dark bits on the image and the lightest point on your gradient to the lightest bit on the image and everything in between. So you get this nicely colored image. Now obviously this does not look very good at all, but we want to just preserve these colors through and through, so we're going to set our gradient map adjustment layer to the blend mode of soft light. That's going to, you can see, change the colors of our image, but what else does it do? 
it increases the contrast of the image. If we want to preserve cinematic quality and style in an image, we really need to dump contrast. So what I do, if I know that I'm going to apply a gradient map, I almost always go ahead and throw a brightness contrast adjustment layer onto uh, on top of my layers, and I reduce the contrast a whole lot. So while it doesn't look great for that one second, then when I bring in a gradient map, which I know is going to increase the contrast a lot, it works together perfectly because I've offset the contrast that gradient map is pumping into it by using a brightness contrast adjustment layer to remove that contrast. So you can see if I get rid of brightness contrast, way too much contrast, it gives me all these weird colors. Now I've got a nicely, uh, and the color doesn't quite work for this image, but I'm just using this as an example. But I've got an image where at least the contrast and tonal aspect of the image lines up the way it should. So there would be before, there is after. We've changed the color of the image without really messing with the contrast in the image. We can throw these layers on top of it now and we get an image that's very, very bright, which probably means we would need to just reduce the opacity of these layers a little bit more. But that's also the beauty of your adjustment layers. You can reduce the opacity as you need to. I want to take some of that color out of there, in fact, which means we should take away some of that lack of contrast that we were pumping in. And we can see here, hold down the Alter Option key, select my original layer. There was the image we started with. There's the image we finished with. Whether it's an upgrade to the image, that's debatable. But the point is, we've talked about how to use these brightness contrast adjustment layers effectively. It's more than just a brightness and a contrast slider. There's so much more you can do, especially when you use these as adjustment layers. So, for the brightness contrast adjustment layer in Photoshop, and I hope you've picked something up through this tutorial. This was all right off the cuff, by the way. No planning for this at all. <laughs> for brightness contrast adjustment layer and just straight up adjustment in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.